In the next part, we are going to talk about the diagnosis. When the patient is asymptomatic or they do have a few symptoms, arrhythmias or fatigue, uh, a test that is called stress testing or exercise testing can be used to evaluate the suspected coronary artery diseases. If the patient has a typical angina pectoris or atypical angina pectoris, this should be taken as well. Or a patient who has a known coronary artery diseases or after myocardial infarction, testing how good the perfusion is and after intervention or evaluating the exercise capacity of the patient or any kind of cardiac rhythm disorder should be evaluated by the stress testing as well to see whether this is due to the arrhythmia due to ischemia or independent from ischemia. The equipment for the stress testing, we can use the treadmill or bicycle or steps, an ECG and blood pressure cuff and an exit strategy that should we use some uh, medication if it's needed. Exercise stress testing, pathophysiology. At rest, there may be an adequate coronary blood flow with exercise supply may not keep up with the demand leading to a characteristic ST segment changes and other endpoints due to obstruction. At least 7 to 80 occlusion is needed before coronary stenosis obstruction is reliably detected by this test. Significant coronary artery diseases can exist with a negative exercise test. We should keep in your mind. Diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction, STEMI and NSTEMI. At least two of the following symptoms should be present. Ischemic symptoms, diagnostic ECG testing and serum biomarkers elevation. So any of these two of the out of these three, this can support a diagnosis. STEMI. The STEMI occurs when the coronary thrombus develops rapidly at the site of vascular injury, slowly developing coronary artery stenosis do not typically precipitate a STEMI because of the development of rich collateral network. Pain is the most common persisting complaint but can be absent. The pain is heavy, squeezing and crushing. It involves the ventral portion of the chest, epigastrium and radiates to the arm. Nausea, vomiting, sweating, defecation, sensation can be the sign of MI as well. Myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is an irreversible condition when necrosis will develop without the proper intervention. Let's look at the progression of myocardial infarction. Acute usually develops in the first few hours to seven days. Here we do have to develop a necrosis. Subacute or the healing period that takes about from one week to four weeks. And definitive or healed or old MI, it's over one month. Testing, ECG, cardiac biomarkers, cardiac imaging, and blood specific EBC assisted tissue necrosis and inflammation. Staging of STEMI. This is a normal when we do have a normal R wave, normal isoelectric ST segment, and a positive T wave. In ischemia, the first thing that's going to develop, the T wave is flattening and turning to negativity. And this negativity be deeper, deeper, and at the same time the ST segment starts to elevate. And when we do have the necrosis, the Q wave, ST elevation, and T wave inversion be the sign. When the onset of chest pain occurs, we do have the hyperacute stage that causes the injury. We do have an ST segment elevation, but this called the T on dome phenomenon. When we do have a peak T inside this ST segment elevation due to the local hyperkalemia, 
In acute stage, the necrosis develops continuously at the same time as this segment is decreases and the R getting lower. And by the end of the acute stage, the T wave inversion, first the biphasic and later on the negative T wave will be presented. In subacute, we have no ST changes, only we do have a Q and negative T wave. If the patient develops an aneurysm, this ST segment won't come back to the baseline. So if somebody does have a persistent ST elevation after MI, you have to think about an aneurysm that developed in the necrotic area, the scar tissues. In definitive stage, only the Q stays. A T wave is flattening or positive or is not altered or negative. So any kind of T wave can be, but you have to use the anamnestic data of the patient to see whether it is old or not. But for sure, necrosis stays permanently. Localization of the MI. When you look at the ECG, the 12 leads ECG, you have to look the old 12 leads, except AVR. AVR is not used to diagnose MI because AVR looking into the chamber, so the ventricle chamber, so it's useless and you don't have any surrounding electrodes. Depending on which coronary supplies this area, we distributed the leads in different areas and different coronaries. For example, anterior and enteroseptal portion is supplied by the left ascending uh, uh, coronary or ramus interventriculus anterior coronary. And the lateral or high lateral is usually is supplied with the ramus circumplexus and the inferior and posterior by the right coronary artery or arterial coronary dextra. Right coronary artery. Right coronary artery supplies the inferior wall of the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the posterior part of the left ventricle, the posterior fascicles of the left bundle branch, and sinus node and the AV node as well. Pathophysiology of the right ventricle MI. A uh, right ventricle is a thin wall chamber that functioning at low oxygen demand. Right ventricle is a low volume pressure pump. Its contractility highly dependent on the diastolic pressure. It's perfused throughout the cardiac cycle in both systole and diastole. Its ability to extract oxygen is increased during the hemodynamic stress. Good collateral blood supply, especially anterior wall area of the right ventricle. All of these factors make the right ventricle less susceptible to infarction than the left ventricle. The right ventricle MI can occur, however. Up to 50% of the inferior MI will have right ventricle infarction as well. When somebody has a coaxidence of the right in function and the left one. For example, the inferior together with the right ventricle in function has about the morbidity of 31%, comparing when we do have only the inferior that has about 6% incidence. Clinical sign. If somebody does have a jugular vein distension, hypertension with or without nitrate and clear lung sound, you have to think about the right ventricle MI. For diagnosis, the right side leads has to be used. 90% sensitivity and specificity. And the lab value, the troponin, we are going to talk about later on. The ST elevation in lead number 3, AVF, and V4R, usually this is what they used, V5R and V6R can be used as well, but V4R itself can be used to diagnose the right side MI. Right ventricle preload is dependent on cardiac output. Nitrates cause preload reduction, thus use nitrate with extreme caution or if you can avoid, don't use it. Hypotension 
in right ventricle myocardial infarction often responds very well to IV fluid administration because it increases the preload. The next is the G tracing. This is, you can see, uh, well, we do not have too many bits, but it looks like rhythmic, only one thing that bothers me, that there is no P wave. I cannot see any P wave, or it has to be a junction rhythm, or it can be an atrial fibrillation, but only for two bits, I cannot decide it yet. All right, now, uh, looking at the QRS complex is narrow, the axis is normal. As you see immediately that the 2, 3, and AVF, we do have this T and dome uh, as the elevation. And in V1, V2, V3, we do have a mirror image of the posterior MI with a ST depression. Now they put up the posterior leads V8 and V9, and we can see very nicely the typical shape of the Q and ST elevation, Q ST elevation. And in V4R, that represents the right ventricle, we do have this ST elevation, nice ST elevation, proving that this patient has an inferior posterior and right ventricle uh, acute MI. Yes, here you can see the pathological Q wave. We do see the ST depressions and the ST elevation in V8, V9. So proving that inferior posterior acute MI, and we do see in V4R the typical MI sign. So let's summarize these things. We do have an inferior posterior acute with right ventricle MI. If you do see in lead number one an AVL, this ST depression, this is a mirror image of lead number three because AVL and lead number three is almost opposite to each other. So we have to see the reciprocal changes if you can see any kind of alteration of any leads. 